Hey, on today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about your tools of trade and what that means and how we can make the most of our tools of trade to get more out of our businesses and to make sure that we're doing everything as efficiently and simply as possible in our business. Now, I know businesses are complicated. I have two of them. One, my bookkeeping business, Efficient Trady Bookkeeping for over 11 years now, and then my coaching business for over five years. So yes, they are complicated. But what I have found over time is the more work I do on my tools of trade. So in my instance, I think about my tools of trade is my education and my training to learn new concepts and new processes and new um, various things in business. So I can then break that down and make it really simple for my clients and then to be able to teach and educate my clients to help them be more efficient and more profitable in their business. Now for you, depending on what type of trade you are, you know, if you're a builder, then you're thinking about, you know, your your tools, you know, your drop saws, you know, drills, all those bits and pieces. If you're a tiler, you've got some different tools of trade and so on for every trade. So if you think of your tools of trade for your specific trade, there'll be a bunch of things that come to mind. And what I want you to also think about is what tools of trade from a learning education training perspective um, are you using at the moment, if anything at all? So what I hear so often, pretty much with everybody that I talk to is that you're working really, really long hours. Um, the clients are slow to pay you or not paying you at all in the case of some of the big builders going bust and that you're just doing what you can because that's all you can afford to do. So what I want you to think about and what I know from working with hundreds and hundreds of tradies over the course of all of those years is you really want to work just a reasonable amount of hours. And, you know, it would be a bonus if you could do a half day Friday. But for many people just starting, you want to just not work Saturdays or not work 10, 12 hour days. And that's totally doable. You want consistent cash flow. So the biggest headache that clients come to me is the up and down of their cash flow and that living week to week, month to month, invoice to invoice. And the third thing that they want is just having, being able to have those and achieve those dreams that they thought about when they started business. Now, when I chat to clients, I work with a lot of clients who in within the three to five year mark in business. And what I refer to that period of time, because this has been consistent over the 11 years I've been in my first business, that between that three and five year mark is where we kind of go, oh shit, is this it? This is like where the realization happens that you've worked your butt off for those first few years and not much has changed. You're still working really long hours, cash flow still sucks. You're still, you know, if you're lucky, you're showing profit on paper, but you've got no cash in the bank. Um, and you do one of two things here. So the client, so those that reach out to me are the action takers. They're the ones who go, actually, this is not for me. I can't keep doing this. So I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to learn, you know, I'm going to talk to specialists and I'm going to figure out and learn what do I need to do to improve my business financially. And the second people are those who don't put their hand up and those who just think that this is it. Because if we are at a barbecue talking to a bunch of self-employed, to a bunch of self-employed friends, pretty much everyone has the same problems and it becomes the norm. And I'm here to tell you that it does not have to be the norm. Yes, business is never going to be perfect, but we can absolutely change that paper profit that you don't know where it is to cash in the bank profit. We can absolutely make sure that you have a really consistent cash flow. We can make sure that you've got cash in the bank as buffers when things don't quite go to plan because we all know life business happens. We can absolutely do that. But what you have to start and what I invite you to start thinking about is that your knowledge around your trade is exceptional. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to do what you do. And you did, an, for most of you, you did an apprenticeship, um, you know, three or four year apprenticeship to learn that, those skills. And I want you to have a think about what time has gone into increasing your financial skills. For many, many business owners, particularly in the trade space, it's not a lot. And that is 
not always your fault. For many instances, it's just because there's nothing really out there specifically to tradies to teach you how to manage your cash or how to understand your financials better than you had before. I hear time and time again, clients go to their accountant once a year, um, they get their returns, the accountant briefly goes over it and you walk out of there more confused than when you walked in because often it tells you you've made a profit on the paper, but there's nothing in the bank account and you're not sure how that works. So what I wanted to talk to you about today is what you can do to help increase your financial knowledge and think about that as another tool in your toolbox. Now, as I said, for me, for me, it's always about education and training. So I can then simplify that and and work with my clients on those things. Now, for me, I invest a lot of money in my education and training, a lot of money. And a lot of those trainings are not in Sydney, I'm based out of Sydney, but they're not in my local area and I have to travel for them. So there's quite an expense that goes along with that as well. And so what I've done, because I wanna make sure that I'm always increasing my knowledge and my education and my training, um, I have in true profit first form, a bank account specifically for my education. Each and every week, I have an automatic payment come from my operating expenses that goes into my education account and that money accumulates and I've worked out roughly what all my education and training is going to cost me over the course of the year and it is substantial um, because there is travel involved for pretty much all of it as well. And so and I've then broken down that annual amount to a weekly amount and I've set up that automatic payment from my operating expenses account into my education and training account. Now that same concept applies for any trades businesses who might want to um, you know, have an equipment purchase or who needs to put money aside for staff uh, long service leave or any of those things. So as I talk about always, Profit First is a framework and we customize it to your business. And I, as I said, have my education bank account so that I can always say yes to the opportunities that come my way to be able to learn from those who are doing um, different things in my space so I can then take that to my clients. And I want you to start thinking about, as I mentioned, how are you going to increase your financial knowledge? How are you going to you know, add that financial piece to your toolbox? Because you don't have to be the specialist in this area. Absolutely not. You are the specialist of your trade. But having a really solid understanding of what's going on with your finances and that's what I teach to clients when we work together to implement Profit First in their business, really makes a huge difference. I mean, I've got client after client after client after client who can, um, you know, attest to now having cash in the bank, having profit in their profit account, being able to take holidays, only working half day Fridays, um, all of those things, less stress, less family stress. Um, and they that is because they decided that they were going to invest in their financial tools. So what I wanted you to think about today, there's three things that I wanted to have a think about. Firstly, don't wait for later. Later never comes. As I say all the time, is things don't miraculously get better. So please don't wait for later. The second thing, make a decision now. Either make a decision that you're going to invest might just be time at this at this point. It could just be continuing listening to my podcast, reading my book, reading other, um, you know, listening to other podcasts on financial financials for tradies and so on. Um, but just decide that you're going to do something and start doing it and plan for it. Have a think about, do I need to open another bank account and just put $25 aside in there every week or an amount in there every week, which is what a number of clients do that work with me who often come to me and they don't have the cash spare to invest now in working with me because obviously, um, you know, things haven't been going to plan for them. So they open a bank account, they put a small amount in there every week, each and every week, so that that amount, then that amount builds up. And before they know it, they've got an amount they can invest in their financial education, work with me, and then we can start making, you know, huge leaps and bounds in their business. Um, so think about what areas of the business from a financial perspective do you need to upgrade your tools in? Is it 
with your accountant? Is it with your bookkeeper? Um, are you ready to implement profit first in your business or are you not ready to implement profit first in your business, but you know you need to do it? Um, think about how much that's going to cost. Reach out, for example, if you've been thinking about working with me and you're not sure how much that is as an investment, reach out and find out so you've got a goal in place. Open a bank account, put that automatic payment in there and start looking forward to it. Start having something to look forward to rather than, oh, I'm going to be in this same spot this year, like next year as I am this year. No, in, you know, it might be three months, it might be one month, it might be six months, it might be nine months that you're going to have enough money there to invest in your financial education because updating that tool of yours is going to just make a huge difference to your business, to, you, to yourself, to your family, to your health, to everything you do. Once you can nail your numbers, everything in your business will change for the better. So as I said, don't wait for later. It never comes. Decide now that you're going to do something and plan for it, whether that's booking in a call with me, opening up a bank account, sending me a message or an email, whatever it may be, start doing the first step now. Make the decision and remember, if, you, if you're not making a decision, that's still a decision. So either make the decision that, no, actually, I'm good, I'm happy where we are, we don't want to increase our financial education anymore, or decide that actually, yes, we want to do something and then take that first step.